My talk today is not the, how to say the, uh, the technical topics, but the environmental protection uh, from thorium. Of course, I myself uh, developing uh, uh, thorium molten salt reactors, and uh, I believe uh, this is a very, very important technology to supply uh, clean and safe and affordable uh, energy, not only to China, but including Japan uh, to the world. But uh, we are now excited to utilize the thorium as a nuclear fuel. But um, anyway, I, uh, we should uh, think about these kind of things. This morning, uh, Dr. Jan said, few years ago, uh, we talked a lot, a lot about the global warming. But do you hear this kind of news yesterday, today? Not many people talking about global warming, climate change. But the, uh, the global uh, world population exceed, exceeded uh, 7 billion uh, last year in October. And of course, it is still increasing. And of course, the, uh, the increase of the uh, population in the world at the same time uh, means the increase of the energy consumptions. And of course, the, uh, if people who are living in the, uh, developing countries becomes to emerging countries and the developed countries, uh, their uh, how say lifestyle becomes much modern. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the energy, not only energy, but the resource consumptions increases. And of course, the China is a uh, how say the a uh, very important country relating to these kind of issues. Because the, as you know, I know, you know, <coughs> China is the uh, world's largest population countries. And of course, the, uh, China is uh, now the second uh, largest economic country. But I believe uh, maybe within a few years, uh, China becomes the world's uh, largest uh, top countries uh, in economies. But still, uh, the people's lifestyle or the uh, how say they're <coughs> uh, consuming the energy will still small per capita. So the energy uh, requirements are still increasing. And so the, uh, uh, I'm coming from Japan. Japan is located just the east part of China. And uh, if uh, China produces a lot of uh, carbon dioxide, including uh, uh, socks and NOx, it comes to Japan. So I would like to ask China to produce uh, much clean energies. And uh, of course, I will be able to support uh, to produce, uh, develop uh, uh, much cleaner uh, energies. Of course, uh, in the field of the nuclear power, including the thorium utilizations. And so the <clears throat> uh, anyway, we have to solve the, the problem of the environment. Especially, we have to support uh, the China. And uh, the, anyway, in order to have a good lifestyle, the important fundamental is uh, energies. We have to provide energies. But at the same time, we have to provide the clean energies. At first, we, do, uh, do not, we must not provide uh, carbon dioxide at the same time. So the nuclear power have the very good uh, hot city uh, possibilities to supply energies. And uh, of course, we can use uh, uh, uranium. Still, we can use uranium. But at the same time, we can use thorium. But the, uh, of course, uh, uh, we have, we means uh, not Japanese, the world, uh, spent uh, uh, longer than the 50 years uh, to utilize uh, nuclear power at the commercial scale. But we become to understand, yes, nuclear power provided electricity. But at the, same, at the same time, there are the concerns relating to the nuclear uh, radioactive waste. And sometimes uh, uh, some countries try to utilize the uh, spent nuclear fuel for the nuclear weapons. And of course, safety is a very, very important issue. Last year, in Japan, we had a very huge accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. And I'd like to say thank you to all attendees coming from the many countries to support the Japan's to uh, survive and revive us. But the uh, process is still uh, ongoing. So I would like to ask you uh, continuous uh, support to Japan. Uh, the people uh, gathering this room knows or understand that the thorium is the key issues to solve these kind of problems relating to the nuclear power. Mm -hmm. Of course, thorium can be utilized in the light water reactors. This is a commercialized reactors. And uh, 
most of the, uh, the commercial uh, power plant, nuclear power plant, is operated in the right water reactors. And uh, uh, not today, but the, uh, Professor Takaki, coming from Japan, will talk about the thorium right water reactors. And uh, Julian Kelly, coming from the Norway, uh, who is working for the Toru Energy, also talk about the thorium right water reactors. And uh, uh, the candle reactors is very good. And uh, that is not the light water reactors, that is the heavy water reactors. And uh, uh, within this conference, uh, Chinese people talk about the uh, thorium utilization in candle reactor, heavy water reactors. And uh, maybe, the, uh, I don't remember exactly, but the, on the last day, or the, the day before last day, uh, there is a, uh, one presentation about the pebble bed uh, modular reactor. This is a, a high temperature gas reactor. This is also very attractive to utilize thorium. And uh, uh, I think uh, some of the Chinese people uh, coming here also attended the, this conference. This is a TU 2007. Uh, of course, it was held uh, five years ago in Beijing, Tsinghua University. And that was a great opportunity to, how to say, uh, notice that the thorium is a very, very important nuclear fuel. And uh, I, I was there, and uh, what I talked about in this conference was thorium molten salt reactors. So it was five years ago. And uh, I would also like to say that the, uh, in 2009, there was a conference which is named TU 2009. What's interesting was that this conference was held Baoto. It's where, uh, it is located in the uh, inner Mongolian regions. Of course, you know, this is a very, very important place for producing rare earth materials. Rare earth is very, very important. And Rare earth and the thorium exist in the same order. And uh, my, also, I was there and I talked about thorium molten salt reactors. <clears throat> but unfortunately, at that time, there was no other talk about the molten salt reactors. But, of course, China is going to the good, good directions. <clears throat> molten salt reactor is very good. Of course, I say light water reactor is good, heavy water reactor good, high temperature gas reactor is good, but molten salt reactor is very attractive. And uh, uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Xu uh, announced this morning, a Chinese uh, Academy of Science announced or decided to develop molten salt reactor to utilize thorium last year in January. And of course, the United States, uh, this is a country of origin of the molten salt reactors, uh, kindly support China to, uh, how to say it, uh, for the development of the molten salt reactors. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I don't talk in detail about the safety of the molten salt reactor because uh, uh, there, will be se there will be several uh, presentations uh, during this conference about the safety of molten salt reactors. But the very, very simply speaking, uh, there is a one reactor core here. Uh, in this uh, slide, uh, it is located the upper part. And in this slide, uh, I, use, uh, I uh, write uh, the graphite moderator. This is uh, something like uh, uh, to improve the nuclear reactions. And the <clears throat> the, this part is corresponding to the uh, the liquid uh, fuel. Of course, this, in this case, the molten uh, salt is used as a uh, solvent uh, mediums. But for the case of the loss of external electricity, which happened in the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, what happened on the molten salt reactors? It's quite simple. The temperature of the fuel salt increased. But at that time, the freeze valve automatically opens. The freeze valve is, uh, uh, how to say, it, um, used to freeze the high temperature molten salt. And the freeze valve utilizes, for example, this is just an example, uh, something like the electric fan, which is, of course, driven by the external electricity. If there is a 
loss of the external electricity, the fan automatically stops. Then the frozen salt at this <coughs> position becomes to melt. And then, of course, the salt automatically, automatically go down. There is no need to utilize electricity pump. Only we use the gravity. Maybe simply go down. And there is no uh, zirconium uh, in order to pack the uh, fuel salt. So the, and there is no use of the uh, water, H2O, in order to cool the reactors. So there is no production of the hydrogen. So there is no explosion of hydrogens. And uh, but the, I would like to say, there is still uh, many remaining subject to commercialize a molten salt reactor. So the, for example, the radioactive materials uh, go around in the primary circuit. And so the, uh, the how say the radioactivity outside of the reactor core increase. And so the, if the, uh, some maintenance people needs to uh, operate uh, this reactor, we have to take care of these operators uh, from the view of the health. And of course, uh, uh, this is a molten salt liquid fuel. So the liquid fuel goes outside of reactor core. And uh, this is a, uh, how to say, the very, very unique point in order to maintain the, maintain the chain reaction of any kind of uh, nuclear fission reactors that is a uh, delayed neutrons. Uh, neutrons coming from the, uh, as a result of the fission uh, reactions, but most of the uh, neutrons is generated as soon as the fission reaction happens. They are called the plumped neutrons. But there are quite a small amount of the uh, neutrons coming with a time delay. That is called delayed neutrons. In a uh, uh, conventional uh, commercial we use the light water reactors or the heavy water rea uh, reactors. Uh, the all fuel exists inside the reactor core, so the delayed neutrons can be utilized completely. But for the case of the molten salt reactor, especially for the large reactors, delayed neutrons is emitted outside of the reactor cores. So the, uh, this will somewhat affect the safety control of react, uh, fission reactions. So that this point should be uh, improved. And of course, the, uh, many people think that, that there will be a corrosion problem in the, uh, the pipings. Yes, uh, very good materials, uh, named the Hastero N, or the simplified or modified uh, Hastero N is developed, uh, which is suitable for the uh, molten salt reactors. And uh, in Czech Republic, and uh, there will be a, a several uh, presentation during this conference. And the uh, Czech Republic produces a, a developing uh, uh, monocle. This is uh, also the nickel alloy. Uh, molybdenum, nickel, and chrome is used. And the French people also develop the other kind of uh, nickel alloy. Russian people do also the same. And uh, so the, uh, but uh, in the other words, we have to confirm that the, this nickel alloy is suitable really suitable for the molten salt reactors. So the <clears throat> this is also an important point. And the mass transfer phenomena is uh, uh, not occur uh, in the right water reactors, but they're especially important for the molten salt reactors. The, how to say the solubility of the uh, metallic materials to the mer uh, molten salt depends on the difference of temperatures. Roughly speaking, uh, the metallic materials tends to solve much higher at the high temperature positions. And the, the solvent, uh, <coughs> the sol uh, sol uh, how say the, uh, the value becomes much smaller for the lower temperature positions. But this is, a, of course, a nuclear reactor generating the thermal energies. And the energy is removed at the heat exchangers. So there is a temperature difference at the, uh, how to say, the, uh, the heat exchanges. So that this kind of mass transfer phenomena is very, very important, especially for the heat exchanges, because uh, uh, the wall thickness of the uh, 
heat exchanger piping should be seen in order to enhance the, uh, the thermal uh, heat transfer coefficient. So the, this kind of engineering um, subject have to be solved. And uh, if it is allowed, it should be confirmed by using the real, um, how to say, the, uh, reactors. And of course, the, uh, I myself developing the molten salt reactors. And at the, uh, right now, I'm going to utilize the flybe, flybe as a, a molten salt. And of course, uh, um, we don't use the natural lithium. We use the enriched uh, lithium. Uh, most of the, uh, the lithium is uh, lithium-7. Because the uh, lithium-6 uh, produces uh, tritium when it absorbs the tori, uh, neutrons. And of course, the tritium is uh, a hard, the hazardous uh, materials for the uh, humankind. So the, uh, we have to um, decrease the production amount of tritium. But the molten salt reactors produce a lot of tritium. So we have to solve these problems. But the, anyway, the existence of pro uh, problem is not a problem. We can fight against the existing problems. So that I would like to encourage the Chinese uh, effort to develop the um, thorium molten salt reactors. I believe you can do that. But uh, uh, from now, I would like to talk to you about the thorium utilization, not the molten salt reactors. We know that the thorium can be used as a uh, uh, nuclear fuel. We know this uh, from the 1940s. It is uh, uh, 70 years from now. But we didn't use or we couldn't use. Why? This is a quite important question. As you know, a thorium is a, something like a fat, uh, body of a match. Yes, body of a match is very important in order to sustain the uh, firing the uh, match. But in order to start the firing the match, what we need is the fissile. Fissile is the head of a match. If we don't have any fissile, we cannot start fission reactions with thorium. And uh, as you know, uh, natural uranium contains both body of match and head of match. Of course, body is a uh, uranium-238, and head is a uh, uranium-235. But the thorium, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. But anyway, thorium does not contain any fissile isotope. Right now, we are only using uranium as a commercial nuclear fuel. The left-hand side indicates the uh, existing, uh, very simplified uh, uranium fuel cycle. We get a uranium fuel from mining, both fertile body of match and fissile head of match can be obtained from the, uh, nature. And we can use a uranium fuel in a power plant, and we generate electricity. And, of course, spent nuclear fuel obtained, and uh, some country try to reprocess and utilize plutonium as fissile materials. Japan, um, I don't know the future nuclear energy policy, but uh, until last year, Japan uh, tried to utilize uh, the plutonium in the <coughs> spent nuclear fuel. But right now, it is not used. But if we try to use the thorium, it is indicated here, right hand side. Yes, we can get fertile, but there is no natural fissile. So the, uh, there is also the, uh, several presentation during this conference about the uh, accelerator driven subcritical system. Yes, separation reaction will be able to produce the neutrons. And if we utilize the neutrons, we can get artificial fissile from thorium. But I don't know how long it takes. So that moment, we cannot use thorium. But there are many amounts of plutonium here. If we utilize plutonium, for example, by using the fluoride volatility technologies, uh, based on the, uh, the Czech Republic technologies, we can convert it to the plutonium fluoride, to the fluoride, and it can be used with thorium molten salt reactors. But what's important is quantitative analysis. The previous slides only say that today, yes, this kind of collaboration will be available. 
But what's important is how many torn molten salt reactors will be available in uh, these 40 years, something like that. This figure indicates <coughs> that this is only for the China. We are now here, and as uh, uh, Dr. Jiang said, we, uh, China is going to expand the capacity of the uranium light water reactors, like this cup, and he only mentioned about the uh, prediction until the 2020, but if we simply extend it to the 2050, it will go to the 220 gigawatts around 2050 in China. And as a result, this curve indicates the uh, stockpile of the uh, put, uh, spent nuclear fuel, and we may be able to ex uh, utilize plutonium from this spent nuclear fuel. But the available thorium plutonium molten salt reactor will be like this curve, and of course the uranium-233 can be obtained as a result of the thorium plutonium molten salt reactor. But the total available capacity will be about just 55 gigawatts in 2050. So uh, I of course uh, uh, have to uh, develop the molten salt reactors itself, but at the same time we have to notice about this uh, quantitative analysis. But uh, for example, in Japan we have lots of spent nuclear fuel. Uh, it corresponds to 10 gigawatts of the thorium molten salt reactor. So I would like to suggest to China to buy this spent nuclear fuel. Of course, it's just a joke. <laughs> But uh, if you ask Japanese government to uh, utilize the Japanese, Japan's spent nuclear fuel, maybe they will give it to you <clears throat> because we don't have any final disposal area. And uh, at the same time, I would like to talk about the rare earth productions. This is very important because the rare earth is uh, uh, indispensable for today's world. And China is producing uh, uh, most of the uh, world productions. And, but the uh, United States is going to uh, produce uh, in these few years, and Australia is going to do. Uh, Rares uh, Rares is used for the wind turbine, for the, uh, the dynamo, and of course there are uh, photovoltaic cell utilize Rares. And the needless, needless to say, uh, the hybrid cars, electric vehicles, of course the fuel cell vehicles, they use electric motors, so they use the Rares. But the the problem right now is a byproduct. This is a thorium. This is an accumulation of thorium in the world, and uh, India has a lot of uh, separated thorium, and the US is too. And uh, China is, has already uh, have the several amount of the thorium. And Australia, if they produce a rare earth, they become to have a lot of thorium. But the, would you please look at the here? This amount corresponds to the world estimation of available thorium molten salt reactors. And these thorium molten salt reactor requires only nearly the seven, uh, 70,000 tons around 2050. But the total accumulation of the thorium as byproduct in the world nearly 450,000 tons. To more and more. And this is a calculation based on the previous slide. If China introduced uh, uh, 55 gigawatts of the thorium molten salt reactors, they require only 10,000 tons. But the accumulation of the thorium in China, only in China, is 117,000 tons. So the, this will be the house the excess stockpile of thorium only inside of China. <coughs> I'm looking at my watch, and uh, I notice that there are only five minutes remaining. <clears throat> and uh, so the, uh, I myself, I often say that I myself developed the molten salt reactor, but at least 10 years will be necessary for commercializations. And <clears throat> how to say that? Uh, it is not, uh, it is uncertain whether we really commercialize thorium reactors, any kind of, so the, until the commercialization of the thorium reactors happens, some storage of thorium will be necessary. But from the view of the uh, industry side, this is just the cost. 
the U.S. storage by the nation, but they terminated because the uranium used for the uranium fuel, uh, nuclear fuels. And uh, China, and we also believe that the tri trium as a dream, but this dream will disappear if we fail in technological development. Then the thorium is only remains as a waste. And what is necessary? Rare earth is, of course, indispensable. But the, uh, its production is not so clean because of the thorium. And uh, no one pay uh, to take care of the environment from thorium, especially my country, Japan. We only consume rare earth. And the question is, uh, who has the responsibility to take care of the remaining thorium? Of course, this is consumers. And so the important point is how we can construct some framework of the institution in order to uh, let the consumers to know the problem of thorium and how we can correct the uh, money. And I'm proposing the, uh, some international framework which is named ORIC. This is an organization of the rare earth exposition countries. And uh, uh, so the, this is a, a quite simple uh, illustrations. Uh, the motorcar companies from Japan try to buy rare earths, but yes, we have to sell us cheap. But the, uh, if the China sell uh, rare earths at the cheap price, they do not have the opportunity to take care of thorium. And some child comes near the west, waste of the thorium, he will die. But we don't know that the, he died in China. So that this is in Japanese or in China, we call it not justice. <clears throat> and uh, of course, the, uh, the purpose of the ORIC is not to uh, directly to develop the molten salt reactor of the thorium utilization, nuclear power, but the important purpose is to protect environment. And uh, the one of the important function of the ORIC is to uh, correct a financial support from the consumers. That is called tax. This is a, a combination of the thorium and the tax. The rare earth factory in China try to uh, ship the rare earth materials to the outside, not for domestic consumption, uh, to exportations. That will go to the custom clearance, and the information will be provided to the ORIC. How much they sell, how many uh, amount, and it will be sell, sold to the uh, trading company outside, and they will sell to the uh, magnetic uh, market, something like that. And then uh, they pay to the trading company, and the magnetic makers will uh, sell the uh, magnetic to the car suppliers for the uh, electric motors. And of course, they will pay, and the car suppliers will sell their billions of cars to the uh, final consumers. And of course, they pay. And then the trading company is able to pay the sacks to the rare factory. And then the rare factory, of course, in China, uh, will be requested from the ORIC, and then they will pay. And uh, the amount of tax is not so large, just a uh, uh, 10 US dollar per kilogram of the rares, but it will uh, drastically uh, decrease in a uh, few years. But the, the total amount of the accumulation of the uh, tax becomes high enough. And uh, this amount is enough to maintain the reprocessing or the refining facility of the rare earths in China or the US in Mauritius. And uh, the detailed information is uh, have already published in uh, one conference. So if you have interest, would you please ask me? Then the uh, car supplier from other countries, yes, coming to China to ask to sell uh, the rare earths. And they can, yes, smile and sell because the sacks will be collected and used in China to protect the environment from the waste of thorium. And the no one will be died, will be killed by the uh, waste of the rare thorium. And this is justice. <clears throat> so the conclusion is, of course, the thorium is very important. And of course, I myself and you are developing the thorium reactors, including molten salt reactors. But we have to think, at the same time, the existing problem of the waste thorium, and the, the proposing uh, uh, organizations named ORIC will support China to provide rares to the world and protect 
the, the environment from thorium. And of course, it supports China to develop them thorium, a molten salt reactor as a clean and safe energies. Thank you. There is one aspect you did not mention is what is the uh, neutron energy spectrum in your system. I believe that any new system should be optimized with respect to a number of uh, parameters. One of them has to do with the efficiency with which you can uh, minimize uh, waste production and that requires the hardest neutron energy spectrum possible. So how is the energy spectrum in the system you're designing? My design is a thermal energies. And my purpose is to provide the small molten salt reactors so that if we use uh, fast neutrons, it's uh, in, impossible to small reactors because the fast neutrons go outside. I think going to fast neutron flux is, is really a must. I think uh, that is one opinion. It depends on what we produce. What is the purpose? It's not a matter of opinion, it's a matter of physics. All the nuclear, the actinides with even uh, mass numbers don't fission in uh, thermal spectra. Whether you like it or not, that's the uh, law of nature. So mm -hmm. it's not a matter of opinion. I understand. But the, um, how to say there? Uh, nuclear energy is a way of producing energies. Um, configuration of the reactor can be optimized but the, not only from the view of the neutron, neutron physics. It depends on the, uh, how to say the, uh, mechanical engineering and the operations, and uh, how to say the, uh, of course, the waste management will be included. So the, uh, if we only from the discussion of the neutron physics, it will be somewhat misdirect. But of course, uh, uh, I don't uh, say that the fast neutron molten salt reactor is not bad. The Gen 4 mm -hmm. International Forum is now focusing on molten salt fast reactors rather than thermal reactors, so you're getting rid of the moderator and everything. Um, I was wondering if you had uh, any, any views on that uh, as a result of your, um, uh, your examination of sort of build and rollout of them. Wikipedia, English, we still see the uh, the original image of the uh, molten salt uh, reactors using uh, graphite, and it is a uh, one gigawatt reactors, huge. But uh, maybe uh, Professor knows, and uh, maybe you know. If we go to the uh, the uh, website of the uh, Gen4 org, there is a big cross with lead. Graphite moderator is dangerous because of the uh, it provides the positive temperature reactivity coefficients. So the, maybe uh, you don't talk about this point, but the, this is uh, as a point. And this is also very, very important discussion from the, uh, from the view of the uh, nuclear uh, physics. And uh, of course, uh, this is uh, uh, very important. But as I uh, answer to uh, this professor, I myself developing uh, uh, very small reactors. My reactor cannot uh, provide the one gigawatt. So, uh, in this case, uh, we have to carefully evaluate the property of the, how say, the dynamic behavior of the neutronics. We have uh, just uh, developed um, my reactors uh, last year, and now I'm calculating. If my calculation is bad, I have to say uh, sorry to you. <laughs> but I believe small reactor with summer neutron is good. <laughs>